How good does that feel, five in a row? Uh, feels unreal, but I uh, feel like I deserve it. So how tough was Dennis? We all knew going into this that this was not going to be an easy fight. Um, both my hands and my face hurt, so I'd say he's pretty tough. Did you feel at any point that he had you in trouble? Uh, no. Uh, he kept hitting me in like the side of the head, which are always tough shots to take. Um, but I wasn't in trouble. I was more frustrated just because I was having a hard time uh, catching him flush. A great thing to talk to you between first and second round about a kick, making you just focus more on, on your game plan. What happened between the first and second, and how did you execute the rest of the way? Um, you know, I took a risk early in the first round, and he took me down. And so Greg was like, let's stop doing that. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I get too crazy out there, and it's important for me to dictate the fight before I start doing crazy stuff sometimes, you know, let, him, let my opponent know I'm in control. That's very important. I talked to Mike Valle during the win. He was talking to me about Guido Canetti sparring with you in Jackson Sumeme, the, the new guys in Jackson Sumeme. Did, 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 did they help you with the striking? Made you striking better? Made a difference in the fight tonight? Oh, yeah. I have I have two main striking coaches, but uh, I have like five striking coaches together. I got Mike Valle and uh, Winkle John and Brandon Gibson at, at uh, in New Mexico, and then I have Joel Diaz and his brother Antonio Diaz in Indio. So... They all work with me. They all bring something different to the table. So I better be, you know, kind of good at striking after that. <laughs> Let's talk about the accomplishments for you in this fight. I mean, you're only the second guy to ever knock out Dennis Seaver. How does that feel for you? Uh, it feels good. You know, uh, I knew in my heart that I could do it. I trained for it. And uh, at this point in my career, you know, I'm ready for anybody. And uh, he was a risky fight for me to take. And I knew that uh, that would show, like, I belong here. Give me the respect. Um, how dare you don't mention my name with the best in the division. What do you think about a rematch with Lamas for that matter? Or are you more gunning for the title shot? Um, I want it all. I mean, what do you guys think? I'd like to hear what the fans think. That's what I care about. Um, because I can sit here and talk until I'm bored of it. But until you guys or the fans really speak up, it doesn't matter. It seems like the, the, the stop is there. Like, uh, you know, you're a little surprised he didn't step in there or something. Yeah, I thought he was out, you know, because I could feel him not really... He wasn't protecting his face, and uh, he was pushing back with his leg. Um, and I always give the referee, uh, you know, a good job for, for letting him fight. But uh, I felt like he wasn't in it, and he wanted me to do more to show. So I was like, all right. And I, I hit him a couple times extra hard, and then I, I stopped because I, I saw his hands drop a little bit further. So uh, I knew it was over. You talk about, you know, getting a little crazy, and, and you got a little crazy at the end of the second round, too. You know, you, you, you got that throw, you got the mount, you went for the Oma Plata there. And it seems like, do you feel like you have to be able to get a little bit crazy in there to, in order to pull off some of the stuff you do? Well, when you've been doing this 10 years, you get bored. You know? <laughs> I'm, like, standing there, and I feel bad every time that, like, 10 seconds goes by without action. Because as a fan, I get mad. Like, do something. So I'm in there, and I'm like, man, the fans hate me right now, so let me do something stupid. Well, it's funny because Joey, well, Joey even said that during the call. He said you're doing risky things, and you're not protecting yourself against this and that, and it didn't matter. Uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm in control. You know, when people are like, keep your hands up. If the guy was faster than I could move, then, then my hands would be up. When I sparred Tim Bradley, my hands are glued to my face. <laughs> um, guys like that. When I spar these guys that I know I'm faster than, I don't care. You know, I, go ahead, throw. You're not going to hit me. Considering his kickboxing background, his stocky build, uh, what are some of the challenges posed to facing someone with sort of his size and build and background? Um, you know, everybody's, you know, got, got ways uh, of their strengths and their, and their weaknesses. And for him, uh, he had wingy shots, and I had to get in and out without getting clipped. Um, but he left his lead leg out there a lot, so I was able to, to throw some power in his leg every once in a while. Uh, go upstairs. He always leans to the same side. He always spins one direction. So, like myself, I switch stance, and I'm not really a natural southpaw, but I learned it just so that you would be freaked out that I could do both, you know, <laughs> and that's all. Like, uh, so he only spins one way. I would have been more freaked out if he did spinning kicks both ways because then I wouldn't know what was coming. So, you know, knowing that kind of stuff, it makes me feel more comfortable getting in there. You said you were anxious on Wednesday. You bought a house. You had a vehicle without no air conditioning. You going to get the vehicle with AC now? I'm thinking about it, you know. Uh, but it'll probably be, you know, like a hybrid car, you know, like, you know, something cheap. You know, I'm, uh, I just want to be comfortable. I'm not about trying to be flashy and, and, you know, and being all like that. I, I know I need to stay hungry as a fighter. 
and uh, I'm trying to secure my future. You know, any one of these fights could be my last one. So. We were joking about Greg Jackson and how we think he should have an app. He's so calming. I got calm between the rounds. Um, how, how much of an effect does he have on you in between rounds, and, and what did he tell you specifically between these rounds tonight? Um, well, it's high intensity in there, and I don't want to be screamed at. I don't want to, like, be out there and, and having the, the craziest moment of my life, get back for my minute of rest, and then you scream at me. Um, that's then I'm like, damn, I got to go back out there and, you know, be like all stressed out again. So I like to relax, catch my breath, drink some water. I'm a pretty calm person in general. So when I can calm myself down, I, I'm going to come out, perform better uh, in the second, third rounds. It was seemed pretty even heading into the third round. He'd had some moments, you'd had some moments. What, were, what was going through your mind when you were going into the third? Um, I thought I won the second round, which uh, I knew I needed to do after that, the first round. Uh, he was so strong, and I was having a really hard time getting him off me. And uh, so I knew, knew the second round I needed to, to finish strong. Um, and I thought I did that, so I knew the third round I needed to pick it up. I knew I didn't have to be like super active i just needed to land everything and i needed to to hurt him a few times hit him with a couple shots and make make him wobble and and show that you know i'm not just throwing and missing i'm i'm hurting him he had your pin in a few moments uh, in the first round were you surprised considering his kickboxing background how how his top control was no have you seen him i mean he's like you know he's huge yeah he's like and i watch video on him and that's uh that's all he does his leg work his jiu-jitsu is not great because he doesn't really care about his legs. His legs just move. And in jiu-jitsu, you use all four limbs. He's all upper body. So I knew that he every day he grapples, he relies on that grip, that strength. So part of our game plan was, you know, separate uh, his head from his arms. And when he's like this, he's strong. And if you stretch him out a little bit, he's going to let go. So uh, easier said than done. But eventually I got up. So do you get any fresh ink after a win? And if so, is there any room left? I see your left leg's looking a little uh, empty. <laughs> yeah, I got, a, I got this tattoo on my leg about a week and a half ago at a comic book convention. Uh, so I get it in where I can. And, uh, you know, I work around it. Yeah. And, uh, that doesn't you know. mess with the medicals, you know, because, you know, tattoos sometimes, they, they, uh, they don't like, you know, the blood. But yeah, and all that, yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I mean, you might have like got it? me in trouble, so <laughs> thanks. <laughs> We'll cut that out. <laughs> he was very fluid and deceptive. Uh, were, you, were you watching Ali videos or something before this fight? Um, that's just, you know, for so many years, uh, I was helping, you know, great fighters like Joe Stevenson and, and all these guys that used to come around, and I was like their sparring dummy. They used to bring me in. I had a lot of cardio, and I'd never give up. And I would always emulate other people's styles. And, uh, you know, I finally, at this point in my career, know what my style is and what I'm good at. And uh, with my boxing coach, Wild Diaz, uh, has really taught me how to be slick. And then Greg Jackson has taught me how to be creative and not really put limitations on myself and uh, go out there and have fun. And like I said, I like uh, beautiful destruction. You know, it's like painting a picture out there to me. I, I'm trying to move and, you know, I'm trying to bait him, you know, slipping one direction all the time. And then when he throws it again, I slip the other side and throw a punch. Um, I know that. It takes all my skills all together to be the greatest in my division. So part of what makes me good is, is uh, being smarter than my opponent. You mentioned it earlier, and we've seen it in videos uh, that you trained with the pro boxer, Timothy Bradley. Um, what exactly was training like with him, and what did training with him uh, help you improve? Um, you know, I only spar with him here and there, but just training side by side with him, uh, just seeing the way that he fought Pacquiao and no matter what anyone says he went out there and he got hurt and he fought a great fight and and I just saw that and just admired that heart and that spirit and that, that fearlessness and that's what it takes um, at this point in your career is uh, everybody in the UFC has talent you know and uh, I know that I'm up there at the very top but I just took me believing in it a hundred percent no doubts and uh, and just getting in there and executing and, and and you know, letting my work speak for itself. And uh, that's been the biggest factor, is just uh, going out there and, and doing it and, and not being my own worst enemy. With this fight, is there anything that you see in your fighting that you know you can improve to get you to that next level of a fighter? Uh, yeah, it's just sharpening everything. Uh, I feel like I've added so many tools and it's taken me a long time to really put all those together. 
and uh, I feel like just tightening them all up and being more accurate, you know, faster, better cardio, just keep building. Um, that's what I've been doing, and I feel like I'm getting stronger every fight. With five straight impressive wins, you surely can't be far off from a title shot now, but now it's the uh, Queen Zombie Chan Jung, Chan Sung Jung who's got it. Who do you have picked him a winner between him and Aldo, and why? Well, I don't think he would have beat Lamas, so I don't think he'll beat Aldo. Cool. Are you going to be at that fight? The Aldo Zami fight? Uh, that one's in Brazil, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'd love to go. I'd love to go. If the UFC wants to take me out, I'd love to go. But we'll see. I want to, like I said, man, I, I flew in home, and I, uh, I landed in Palm Springs, like 1045 at night. It was 122 degrees that day and I my mom came and I put my bed in just my mattress and a bunch of clothes and I moved over to my new house and all my stuff still in my old house so I gotta go home and I gotta you know I'm probably gonna have people help me move but uh you know I just gonna, students. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah I gotta do that you know I want to relax uh I want to take a vacation a little bit and then uh when they uh, offer me a good fight I'll be I'll be more than ready were you here for either of Tim's fights here at the MGM Grand? No, because I was always fighting. So, uh, you know, Tim's here, and uh, Julio Diaz is here, and all the other, I saw Tyson and Roy Jones, all, all my boxing heroes are here. And uh, I'm a fan of fighting in general, so uh, it's an honor for me to, to put on this performance tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Great job.